What is up, everybody? It's Campin' Randy here, CampinRandy.com. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about kits or levels of modifications that you can do to your Honda Ridgeline Passport or Pilot. So I made Campin' Randy's top three levels of modifications to get you out adventuring. So basically, we're going to have a basic, a mid, and an ultimate setup for you and it all depends on budget you can go with level one uh, the beginner level that i'm going to talk about just to get yourself outdoors the biggest things and we'll go over those here in a little bit are the following so the basic beginner intro to going off road with your honda is a number one a front skid plate if you've looked underneath your honda that oil pan is exposed and take it from me from example i had a buddy that we went off roading with did not have a front skid plate and dropped down on a rock punctured his oil pan and they had to jb weld it he had a five hour drive home and it held but he did have to replace his oil pan he did it himself but it still was pretty uh, costly number two on the basic mod is a one and a half inch leveling kit now, I recommend HRG Off-Road. That's what I sell on CampinRandy.com. That lift kit is down in the description, as well as the front skid plate. The last part of the basic kit is your tires. The tires on your Honda are for street. They're to be quiet. They're to pump out water and a little snow. But as soon as you get any mud in those tires, they're useless. And that's why, or what, when people go off-road and they're like, what? So it doesn't matter what kind of traction control you have. If you have street tires, you're not going anywhere. So what I recommend is a 265, 60, 18, which is a 30 and a half inch diameter tire, all terrain. You can get BF Goodrich KO2s. You can get the Toyos. You can get Falcons. You even get, even get the Coopers. I recommend the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. I've had four sets of those on three different Hondas, and I absolutely love them. They perform well in the mud, the clay, and the snow, as well as they are nice and quiet on the road. Now, there is a little hum, but it's, you know, it's, it's manageable. It's not like a mud tire. If you want to go with an MT uh, tire, you know, you even have more aggressive off-roadness. Off-roadness. But that's what I recommend. So let's go to the intermediate package, the level two, if you want to say, and we're going to repeat what we talked about before. Front skid plate, available on CampinRandy.com, down in the description, as I said, and then we're going to add the gas tank skid plate. That gas tank is plastic. There's a little roll bar in the front if you crawl up underneath your truck and see that, but that really is for the road. If something comes up and hits the gas tank, it'll keep it attached up in there. Um, then we're going to do a one and a half inch in the front in either a one or one and a half inch in the rear. Now, if you want more of a level look than a rake, and when I talk about rake, if you walk away from your ridge line, you're going to see it looks like it's sitting at a 45 degree angle where the front of the vehicle is nose down and the rear end is high up. The reason for this is so that when you tow or you put, you know, your 1500 pounds of payload in the back. Um, the car is not going to be sitting, you know, on bump stops or anything of that nature. And it's going to ride, you know, pretty decent. So you do one and a half in the front and then one, one inch in the back. And that's going to give you clearance throughout the entire uh, Honda. And then if you're going to tow or have a bed rack or a roof rack, then I suggest one and a half in the front, one and a half in the rear. It's going to continue to give you that rake, but when you load it down with a rooftop tent in a bed rack, what that's going to do is it's going to uh, level the truck out so you don't have as much uh, rake. Again, we're going to do uh, tires, 265, 60, 18, all-terrain tires. Um, that's going to get you where you need to go. And I'm not talking extreme rock cl climbing and all the crazy stuff. I mean, I don't rock climb, but I just go into silly places where no Honda should be just to show you guys and the haters that it is pretty capable. Um, 
it's just fun. It's fun. And then when you're not going crazy, you have a nice uh, ride going to the trails and coming home. That's my biggest thing is comfort. Um, then we are going to move to the advanced level or level three for Camp and Randy. And again, we're going to dude. We're, we are going to protect the entire underbelly of your ridgeline pilot or passport. We're going to do the front skid plate. We're going to do the gas tank skid plate. We're going to do the rear differential skid plate, the carrier bearing skid plate, because at your breakover, that's what hangs up, that carrier bearing. And then last but not least is the mid skid plate with the catalytic converter skid plate, theft deterrent, in quotes, um, for that mid area. Nothing for the mufflers or the resonators. Um, as you can see from my previous videos, my mufflers looks like somebody hit it with a ball peen hammer so that's going to be all of your underbody carriage and then i'm going to recommend traxta's rock sliders which i have on my ridge line then from there we're going to do the two and a half inch lift kit ultimate lift kit from hrg that's going to give you a two and a half inch lift with a one inch subframe drop and the reason that we developed this is so that your CV axles and your articulation stays pretty much factory. So you don't end up stressing out your CV axles, your universal joints built into the CV axles, as well as the drive shaft going back to the rear of the truck. What's great about the Honda is the front of your vehicle, where your engine and all your suspension is, is on a sub uh, a subframe it's it's its own thing if you ever looked at honda videos of them assembling your honda you'll see that the engine the the bottom uh subframe all the suspensions all hooked and they just lift it up into your unibody of your truck um, and don't let people give you grief about your unibody um, i actually cut the fender wells uh, where that hump is behind your tire you know if you take your fender wells out you'll see on the firewall it's part of the ace body structure What's amazing is it is like a frame, that big square frame that goes all the way back has actually got cross bracing on the inside of it. I think I have a picture of it. If I do, I'm going to put it right here and you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of rigidity and I'm pretty excited to see the new uh underbody of the ridgeline moving forward because the new 2023 honda pilot um, is built on a completely new redesigned um, undercarriage so if you uh, look and compare the previous gen to this new gen um, and look underneath it's it's very amazing uh, i'm going to do a walkthrough uh per honda pro jason's asked me to do one of my opinion on the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport because all the videos out there like you know the car and driver folks and TFL and what's the other one Kelly Blue Book you know all the ones that just have these everyday reporters talking about the Honda so so he told me I need to go and do my own so that I can express what I see and what I think it'll do basically my opinion right so which is you know doesn't mount to a hill of beans but uh, he says it, that I should do a video for that. So that'll be coming out here pretty soon. All right. So once we get the rock sliders, um, I'm going to suggest the pre-runner bumper with the winch that we built. If you go back and look at my last video, went out with my wife. We went out by ourselves and, you know, like I said in the video, got a little cocky. And we went down a hill that had some uh, V-ditches in it. And I'm talking deep ditches and we got hung up had to use the winch and we were hung up so bad that i had to do a double line um, a single line would not uh, pull us out of the predicament we were in so that's your ultimate level three now you guys said or we'll say randy what's this crazy setup you have going on right now where you're claiming you have five inches of lift well we're going to call that the uh, crazy camp and Randy setup. Uh, we'll do level level four. We'll call it the insane package. What we are creating now, we're going to have two packages um, coming out. 
and I'm going to put it on the website coming soon, probably the beginning of June. I want another month of testing um, with uh, HRG before we say go with this. Um, what we have is we took the two and a half inch lift kit spacers that's on top of the suspension, okay? And then I have the flat out suspension it's a GR Plus. And the difference between the GR Plus versus the GR Lite, the GR Plus has the front shocks inverted, and that helps with cooling so you don't need an exterior reservoir. So if you're on a washboard, you know, I don't really drive fast. All the speed limits on off-roading is like 20 miles an hour, but you've seen people driving 40, 45 miles an hour on a washboard. And when you're on that washboard on stock uh, struts and dampeners, they overheat, and then they start puking fluid out of them because, you know, they expand so much on the inside. So we have the flat-out suspension GR+, Plus, and those give you two inches of lift right there, and they're adjustable coilovers. So mine right now, um, the rear has a, uh, we started with a 425-pound spring, but that spring was a little not enough it wasn't enough so uh i was bottoming out and the springs were hitting so what we ended up doing was looking at a 600 pound spring so flat out sent me that to test and man that is amazing so it it runs really well um with the bed rack the rooftop tent all my gear in the trunk my kitchen you, you know coleman stove everything under my back seat you know all my camping gear i, I take with me um so it works really well, and I think I'm going to – so I have the dampeners on the front. They're adjustable, by the way. So not only do you have adjustable coil coilovers, uh, you have adjustable uh, dampening. So it's uh, – you know, you have a little dial, and you can go from fast to slow. Uh, fast is soft. Slow is hard. Um, That's what she said. So I have the front – set to to soft and then the back i have there's 20 settings i have it on f setting five uh from the softest or the fastest and i think i'm going to bring that down a little bit the uh the rear seems a little you know stiff so i'm going to bring that down a little bit and see see what i have maybe maybe bring it down to a, a notch three and test that out so then from there we're going to work down uh so we started with the spacers on the top the suspension and then we're going to go down to the subframe and we're going to do a two inch subframe drop and it's working good the only things that we're seeing with the two inch subframe drop is your top radiator hose it has plenty of flex but some of you might look at it and go randy this is just a tad bit tight for me so that's that so maybe a one and a half inch subframe drop, one and three quarters um, will do because I like the uh, angle pitch of the axles. So I think we might go with like one and three quarters. Um, there is one wiring harness on the passenger side up by the headlight that you need to detach. Um, our our uh, steering shaft has a uh, column inside of cylinder. So when you drop the subframe, there is enough room. Uh, there's a picture here I'll show you. There's enough room for it to slide down, and you're good to go. Uh, there's no extensions needed to be built. We thought we were going to have to make a steering knuckle. Um, you know, everything's good to go. Then on the back of the truck, everything's fine uh, with the two-inch subframe drop. Um, we are only doing an inch drop on the drive shaft. So when we built the two and a half inch lift kit, we did not do a uh, drive shaft drop from the front to the rear. There was a tad bit of an angle. We never got any heat, um, never got any noise, uh, no issues whatsoever. So um, on this kit that we'll be building, we're going to end up uh, giving you a one inch uh, drive shaft drop. So that'll be the build. Now, that'll be your first option. So if you want to upgrade the suspension, and that suspension also gives you another two inches of travel um, if you need it on those uh, with the flat-out 
suspension. Now, if you want to keep your stock springs and struts, um, we are going to make a four inch lift kit, which is going to give us, um, you know, a, a large spacer on the top of your suspension with the two inch subframe drop or, you know, the one and three quarters, something of that nature. So we still haven't finalized that, how we're going to build that one, but that will be coming out. And I think we're going to call it, um, as I was talking to Ben at HRG Off-Road, we're going to do a four inch lift. So that's probably going to be coming out uh, in June. We just want to finish up some testing over here. Also, I don't know if you guys have been following John DZ as well as Manny. Uh, they've been working on uh, the new 2023 Pilot Trail Sport Struts on the front, uh, which give you uh, one inch of lift and an extra inch of travel versus previous versions. So those front struts on the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport is different than the EXL, the Elites, and all the other ones. So uh, if it's time for you to upgrade your Gen 2 um, front struts, I recommend you get the Trail Sport Pilots. They bolt right up. Um, what was the other thing? Also, Manning is working on, and John DZ ha have it on his vehicle, and Ian at Nolo Designs, the Trail Sport front sway bar. There is some modifications to the mounts that you need to do on the subframe but the end links uh you know work so make sure you check out john dz's uh, video that he did a couple months ago on that and uh manning as well on that so that's it folks that is my suggestions for your beginner all the way to insane uh upgrades for off-road i also recommend the in-bed tent um so if you're starting out and you want to start adventuring and just go out camping that trunk in your ridgeline is amazing. You put the ridgeline uh, tent in there, sets up in about 10 minutes, and uh, you're sleeping in the back of your truck and off the ground, so you don't have to worry about, you know, floods. You know, everything, I don't know. If you've slept on the ground and then slept up off the ground, you know there's a huge difference uh, in your night's sleep, the air quality, um, just everything all around. I think it's just better to be up off the ground. So just a couple of updates to let you guys know what's coming up. June 26th, June 26th out in Colorado Springs. Myself, Ben at HRG Off-Road, Ian at No Low Designs, John DZ, uh, maybe Manny, Nart, uh, Nart Pro, is, are all going to go meet up at Colorado Springs June 26th. And we're going to hit some trails together. So if you guys are interested in joining us in Colorado Springs on June, actually June 25th, we changed the date. It's June 25th till the 28th. We're going to be uh, camping and trail riding. Um, so let us know if you're interested. You can email me, hit me up on social media at CampinRandy, CampinRandy.com. And um, we are not charging for that. You can join us on the trails. Also, All Wheel Drive Fest 23 is in effect it's going to be towards the end of october around the weekend i think it's the 21st ish it's whatever that third weekend is it's going to be in troy north carolina uh we're going to hit the trails again in uari forest in the uari uh hov um off-road park in there if i said that right i think it's some it's some other way it said hov i think i'm talking about the uh express lane so, uh, yeah, those are the uh, two dates that we have coming up where you guys can come out and hang out with us. Um, All Wheel Drive Fest is going to be um, an East Coast kind of chill all the way to extreme like we did last year. It was really cool to let folks take their stock ridgelines, pilots, and passports out and hit the uh, light trails just to show them how their uh, variable torque management system works on their Honda. And then we went out later in the day and really hit the trails hard with all our crazy uh, Honda mods. And then we brought out uh, Bronco Sport. Um, we had a, a Santa Cruz there. So whatever's all-wheel drive, bring it out, and uh, we'll have a good time. That's in October. And uh, also in Greenville, South Carolina, we do rigs and coffee on the third Saturday of every month. So if you guys are close by, come on out. I'm usually the only Honda there, so <laughs> it's pretty, pretty funny. Uh, so you can see all the gnarly setups that everybody has on their trucks, or as some people say, rigs. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. I hope you guys have a great weekend, have a great week, and as always, 
Enjoy the adventures. 